Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Izuku's father Hisashi Midoriya is all for one, part one. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Blue Love 22 link is in the description, also subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's begin the video. In order to put the minds of our students' parents at ease after the villain's appearance at the mall yesterday, we will be holding an open house of sorts, in the form of bringing your parents to school. Azawa began in a bored yet stern tone. As advised by Principal Nedzu this will take place this upcoming Saturday, two days before we leave for our new summer break location. That's only three days away, Izuku pondered. This must have been a really split-second decision. Your parents will be allowed on campus from noon until 4 o'clock. During this time you will be responsible for escorting them around campus, as well as making sure they are off school grounds by 4. All members of UA. Faculty will be present to talk to your parents or legal guardians, so if they have any questions for us after your first year here it will be a good opportunity to get them answered. Before you leave today I would like all of you to write down on this sheet the names of those who might attend, so we are able to properly implement our security measures come Saturday. Make sure to let them know visitors must have some form of identification on them while on campus, such as an ID. While you should be with your parents at all times this will leave them the freedom of coming and going as needed. If you do not have anyone that wishes to attend please let me know that, as well. That is all. But that he handed the paper he was holding to Aoyama, and then wordlessly slipped into his telltale yellow sleeping bag. Barely a few seconds had passed before he was lying on the ground with his eyes closed, completely ignoring the excited chattering of his students. This is so exciting. Mina squealed from where she sat behind a naturally sparkling Aoyama. Once he was done writing his parents' names down, she took the sheet with gusto. My parents have been dying to get a tour of campus and meet the teachers since the day I got accepted. Oh, and they'll get to meet all of you guys too. I talk about you a lot, but now they'll get to put your names with faces. You talk about all of us? Kaminari asked, flattered. Tsayu signed the sheet next. I really only talk to my parents about our foundational hero training class. Same, Siro added. Mina frowned, her lower lip pulling forward into a pout as Iida quickly filled out the form before handing it back to a smiling Yuraka. Really? And to think you two were part of the Bacchus Squid. I bet Kirishima talks about his classmates. Bacchus Squid? Izuku thought, confused for a moment. Oh, she must mean Kakin, Kirishima, Siro, Kiminari, and herself. The red-haired hero in training grinned broadly. Of course I do. I tell them about nearly everything going on in my life. We're super close. Honestly, I can't wait to meet everyone else's parents. It'll be so cool to ask Bakugo's folks for pictures of him when he wasn't so angry. Sato signed his parents' names next, handing it off to Kota, who then handed it off to Kirishima, only after Bakugo was done yelling at him. What did you say, shitty hair? I'm not always angry. I just get annoyed when I'm surrounded by idiots or extras, which is almost always. From where Izuku sat behind his childhood friend, waiting patiently, as the form he needed to fill out was passed to Kaminari, Ajiro, Shoji, Jiro, Siro, and Tokoyami before settling on a quietly contemplating Todoroki's desk, he laughed. Kirishima-kun, I'm not sure they carry around pictures of four-year-old Kakin anymore. His mom and dad will probably try and tell you some funny stories about him from when he was little though. As long as they are the ones to tell you Kakin won't come after me for embarrassing him. Shut the hell up, Deku. Don't give these idiots stupid ideas. You're the one that needs to worry about your mom embarrassing you with all of the baby pictures she has in that purse of hers. Really? Hagakur and Mina yelled excitedly. I bet baby Deku was so cute, Yuraka said thoughtfully. To her surprise, Todoroki found himself humming in agreement from where he gazed intently at the paper on his desk. I wonder if Azawa-sensei can get me the proper paperwork for my mother to visit. There's no way I'm putting my father's name down. Not that he'd need my permission to visit these grounds anyway. I'm sure Azawa-sensei will be able to figure something out, Izuku comforted me. Put your mother's name down anyway. It won't hurt. Nodding at his optimism, Todoroki wrote his mother's name before finally giving the sheet to Aoi Rozu. She finished with it in a few seconds before passing it to Mineta. What about your father, Midoriya? Huh? The fire and ice user's question caught him off guard. Your father, he repeated, will he be attending too? In the past year here I've only ever heard you mention your mother. The Zuku smile slipped off his face faster than anyone had ever seen. I highly doubt he'll attend, but I guess I'll put him on the list anyway. It'd be a pretty crazy first meeting if he did show up. What do you mean by first meeting? Mineta asked, as he gave his friend the form. Well, Izuku sputtered, as he swiftly wrote both Inko and Hisashi Midoriya onto the guest list. I've actually never actually met my father. He didn't die or anything. 
It's just ever since I was born he's been away on business overseas, or at least that's what my mom has been telling me for 15 years. We get checks in the mail to support us, so we know he's alive, but since I've never even seen or talked to him, it sort of feels like he doesn't exist. Does your mother keep in contact with him? Iida found himself inquiring. Bakugo begrudgingly filled out the form before Hagakur finished it off and left it on Izawa's desk for when he awoke. Yeah. She says he sends letters from time to time, but she misplaces them almost as soon as she gets them somehow. I never get a chance to read them myself. We don't have any pictures of him in the house either, so I don't even know what he looks like. Aoi Rozu seemed confused at his statements. Not even one picture. That seems a bit odd. What exactly is his profession again? All Deku knows about his crappy old man is his name, that he breathes fire, and that he's a lame-ass businessman who cares more about his job than his family. Bakugo cut off in a huff. Izuku sighed. Kakin, I'm sure he has his reasons. He's still my father even if he's far away. Although now that you mention Yeoi Rozu-kun, I could ask my mother what he looks like. I hadn't really thought to ask when I was younger because I assumed he would come home to visit us at some point after my birth, but I guess he's got a lot going on. His classmates noted the tinge of sadness as he spoke, obviously holding some bitterness against his father, despite his forgiving and kind nature. Noticing this, Mineta helpfully changed topics as everyone started to get up and leave. Hey, Sai, the grape-headed man said obnoxiously, is one of your parents a frog? If so, how does that work? They both have amphibian-related quirks, Ribbit. You know, Mineta, you'd better be on your best behavior during the open house. I'm pretty sure Jiro has been waiting for the chance to tell someone like your parents about your perverted thoughts and behavior. She would not. The girl in question stared at the short boy emotionlessly. I totally would, so you'd better start acting decent. Izuku smiled as his classmates slowly began making their way out of the classroom. Aoyama gushed to a silent coda about his dazzling parents, while Lajiro, Shoji, and Tokoyami talked about their own families. Sato mentioned to Hagakur how he was planning on bringing in a bunch of sweets for the event, to which the invisible girl was literally jumping up and down with joy. Even Bakugo was more or less in a good mood, not bothering to shove Kirishima, Siro, Mina, or Kaminari away from him, as they made their way out of the room, as a group. Todoroki and Yayoi Rozu spoke to each other, as Tsai, Jiro, and Mineta walked a few paces behind them. The one for all user smiled as he watched his friends and classmates appearing so content, nearly overlooking the fact Uraraka and Iida were patiently waiting for him by the door. Spaced out there for a second, huh? Uraraka guessed as he quickly gathered up his things and bounded over to them. Bazooka rubbed the back of his neck sheepishly. Maybe. I was just thinking how amazed my mom is going to be when she visits. I talk about literally everyone in class to her, so when she gets to meet all of you I'm sure she's bound to cry from happiness. She's really wanted to meet you guys for a while now. The Ida raised an eyebrow. That seems like a strong reaction. Do you really talk us up that much, or is it because she's just excited to meet your friends? More of the second thing. I've only ever mentioned Kakin at home up until high school. He was my only friend until we were four or five, then, well, I sort of stopped talking about anyone at all. My mom's just happy I have so many people in my life to talk about now. Why didn't you have anybody else to talk about in elementary or middle school? Surely you had friends other than Bakugo even before your guys falling out. Izuku winced. Um, not really. After I was diagnosed quirkless and Kakin deemed me useless, nobody wanted anything to do with me. If they hung out with me they would just get picked on or worse, so I was avoided. You two were the first friends I made since I was four. For a moment the duo was silent and Izuku worried that he'd revealed too much about his past. He didn't want to make them feel sad or anything. Sure some parts of his childhood sucked. Some moments were downright horrible. Still, he felt like it could have been much worse all things considered. He really didn't want them to feel sorry for him. I'll make sure she gets to meet Iida-kun, and I first then, Yuraka said determinedly, as they made their way down the hall to leave school. We'll make sure she knows we're by your side at all times so she doesn't have to worry about you. After how you told us she reacted to the Shigaraki thing, I'm sure it would help ease her mind to know we'll have your back. I agree, Iida said with a smile. Not only am I the class rep, but I care about you, as a dear friend too, Midoriya. Your mother can rest soundly knowing we'll keep an eye on you. A friend's happiness and safety is always top priority. Izuku and Yuraka found themselves giggling at how over the top Iida got with his charisma. With the silly poses he struck it would be hard to tell at first glance that he'd come out of the private school just a year ago. Thanks guys. It means a lot. The smile Izuku showed could easily thaw even the coldest of hearts. Yuraka and Iida smiled in return, the trio chatting easily as they made their way home. That night at dinner, Izuku's curiosity got the better of him. 
Hey, mom. He mentioned offhandedly in between bites of katsudan. Can I ask you a question about dad? She seemed a bit surprised at the topic change, but nodded nonetheless. Of course, sweetie. Do you remember what he looks like? I just realized we don't have any pictures of him around the house. Is that because you only have a few and are keeping them stored away safely, or did you not have any to begin with? Inko frowned. He never took pictures, now that you mention it. He also left before you were born, so all of the pictures hanging up are of the two of us, of Mitsuki and I from high school, or Kitsuki and you from preschool. As for what he looks like, the last time I saw him was roughly 16 years ago. He probably looks vastly different nowadays since then. I know, but what did he look like when you married him? I take after you in terms of hair and eye color. Can you tell me if I have any of his features? Izuku waited patiently for his mother to respond, eating a couple bites of katsudan as he waited. When nearly two minutes passed without his mother responding he became worried. Mom? Inko didn't respond verbally, her forehead scrunching up as she seemed to pull herself deeper in thought. She broke into a sweat after nearly a minute of her beginning to mumble nonsense to herself. Izuku got up to stand at her side, bending down slightly so that his head was closer to her own. Mom, are you okay? What are you saying? Mom. I can't remember, she whispered hoarsely. What kind of wife can't remember what her husband looks like? I can't even recall the details of our marriage. We have a wedding certificate somewhere, I know, but all of the letters he sent are missing. Would I really misplay so many letters? Izuku, sweetie, I can't remember anything about Hisashi. Why? Why can't I remember your father? The more she spoke the more upset she became. As she grew more frantic her face paled significantly, and all of a sudden she was screwing her eyes shut and grabbing her head in pain. I don't feel good. My head is suddenly pounding like crazy. I'm going to lie down for a bit, okay? Don't worry about me, I think a little nap will help. I'll try to remember something once I'm feeling better, alright? It's fine, mom. Really. I'll take care of putting the food away and cleaning up. Just take care of yourself, he instructed, his voice laced with concern. She smiled at him softly. Thank you, sweetie. You're always my little hero. But that she made her way out of the kitchen and towards her room to rest, leaving Izuku to lose himself in his thoughts. Something was definitely fishy. After putting the leftovers in the fridge and doing the dishes, Izuku picked up his phone and dialed All Might's number. Within three rings the number one hero picked up. Izuku immediately felt a little shy. Midoriya, my boy. He greeted me happily, making Izuku flush. What seems to be the problem? It's a little late at night for you to be calling. Oh, um, I just had a question and a favor to ask if it's no trouble. If you're busy I understand and I'm prepared to wait or ask someone else I know it's sort of late in the evening and you probably have a life of your own and don't want to waste your time answering my questions when you might be in the middle of dinner and I hope I'm not interrupting anything I'd feel so bad if I. Calm down, kid. Jeez, you're going to talk my ear off. I'm not busy at the moment and would be happy to answer your question. As for the favor, I'll see if it's possible. Izuku breathed a sigh of relief. Okay, all might. Thank you. Um, the question I was going to ask was about quirks. I know there are all types of quirks, but have you heard of one that can erase or alter memories? For a moment the line was quiet. I know they exist, All Might finally responded after a breath. Short and long-term memory erasers, alters and blockers have been seldom recorded since quirks first arose, yet they have been recorded. What brought you to ask me this question though? Did something happen? Oh, well, it sort of has to do with my mom. I asked her about my father today, whom I've never met because he's been away on business overseas since before I was born, and Yeoi Rozu brought up how weird it was that I didn't have any pictures of my father in the house and had never met him. The fact my mom kept losing the letters he's apparently sent is also suspicious. Anyway, when I asked her what he looked like today she became ill and her head started hurting. She said she can't remember anything having to do with my father. We know his name and quirk, but that's it. It made me wonder if maybe someone altered or erased her memories of him. Do you think that's possible? Probably. What do you know about your father, my boy? Izuku told him what he knew, mentioning, as it came to him, the fact that their family doctor had his mother's family history records, but nothing on his father or his father's relatives. If I text you the account number my father sends us money through, as well as his name, do you think your investigator friend can tell me anything about him? Or at least let me know if he knows anyone that would be able to tell if my mother's memories have been altered. I'm sorry if that is too much to ask, but I'm worried about my mom. I also think something weird is going on with my father. I tried searching his name from my phone on the train ride back, but nothing came up. I understand and agree that your suspicion is warranted. All Might assured. How about you text me the information and I'll forward it to Tsukauchi. 
We're good friends, so I don't think he'll mind this favor. He'll most likely get back to me tomorrow or the next day, and I'll call you when I have something to tell you. Is that okay with you? Of course. Thank you so much, All Might. The laugh came from the other line. It's no trouble at all, my boy. Anything to help my successor and student out. I hope your mother gets better soon, by the way. She's a sweet woman, and I hate to know she's feeling anything less than well. Thank you, Izuku said again. I guess I'll let you go then. Have a nice rest of your night. You do the same, young Midoriya. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Izuku hung up, mind reeling despite being happy for All Might's help. What would Tsukauchi find tomorrow? Gurujiri appeared in All for One's hideout in a burst of swirling purple fog. Within seconds his form shrunk down until only his head remained shrouded by his quirk, the rest of him blending in with the dimness of the monitor room. He brushed off his suit upon habit just as the older villain addressed him. What news have you brought me this afternoon requiring a private audience, Kurajiri? Tomorrow wasn't very happy upon hearing you had things you wished to speak with me about without him overhearing. Let me remind you you're still on his bad side after the incident at the USJ, not to mention when you stopped him from hurting the new recruits the other day. I am aware of Tamura Shigaraki's feelings, master. He impressed us both earlier with his plan regarding the hero class's training camp. Once we are told of where the new location will be, I'm sure we'll be able to come up with a strategy to make the mission a success, but there was something else brought to my attention by an ally in the police force. Something involving confidential information you have not told the boy just yet. He is growing in experience and drive, that is true, but I'm afraid an opportunity like the one being presented might be squandered by his hatred for heroes. All for one made a controlled sound of annoyance. This has to do with my most recent son, doesn't it? Unfortunately. I received word that a private investigator was looking into the existence of Hisashi Midoriya late last night and early this morning. I also checked on the accounts you've set up to provide for all of your children, and the one connected to Inko Midoriya has been put under investigation after being linked to other false accounts and a trail of illegal money laundering, as well as identity theft. The Midoriya family will no longer be receiving funds from you. I'm not too worried about that detail, Kurajiri. Are the other accounts being investigated? No. Then the other families will still be taken care of, as usual. Do let me know if that changes though, because the investigators might be able to find a connection between the Midoriya account and the others. Either way, it does not concern me that Inko and Izuku have people looking into one of my many pseudo-identities. There is nothing anyone will find linking Hisashi to me. Gurujiri nodded. That is true, master, but something else has been brought to my attention that you might want to take advantage of. You've been preparing to let Tamura Shigaraki take over and act on his own for a while, correct? Even at the risk of capture. Don't mock me. All of one's voice was sharp. If I am captured it is because I wish to be. I apologize. I didn't intend for that to sound like an accusation, I assure you. That to the point already, I'm beginning to lose my patience. Our spy in the US informed me that there will be an open house this Saturday, the warp gate began. The students' parents are allowed to roam the campus freely, as long as their students put their names on a pre-authorized list filled out at school yesterday. Izuku Midoriya put your alias on the guest list, master. Should you want I could get a fake ID made for you allowing you entrance to campus. Would it not be interesting to pay one of your sons a visit? It could be the perfect opportunity to plant doubt in his mind in becoming a hero. Knowing his father is a villain, maybe even the very one he's destined to destroy on account you believe him to be All Might's successor, will crush him. Such a revelation might even take him out of Tamura Shigaraki's warpath. All for one was quiet for several moments. Finally a small chuckle escaped him, a sound to which Kurajiri stiffened at. I like the way you think. Crushing his spirits would undoubtedly make him less of a pain to deal with in the future. Imagine his classmates, his teachers, the world finding out that his father is a villain. Once word escaped the school, which it would no matter how hard the heroes try and cover it up, the media would eat both the boy and the school alive, for him being able to attend, while my blood runs in his veins. Honestly, I never imagined one of my many quirkless children would become something of a pawn to use in my plan to snuff out what my foolish brother left behind. From what I know the boy absolutely adores All Might as well. Even before that annoying hero chose him, as a successor All Might was who he aspired to be like, and I'm guessing the boy knows about my existence, including that I am the cause for All Might's decline in health. Finding out his own father was the one that caused such a debilitating injury to his hero, would not only be a blow to his self-efficacy and drive to be hero, but All Might himself would surely be in shock. Raucous laughter caught Kurajiri off guard, but the warp gate told himself to remain calm, if even the noise chilled him to the bone. Yes, Kurajiri, I think you're onto something. You've given me something to think about. 
I must speak with the doctor about some ideas concerning my state, but for now I would like you to inform Tamura Shigaraki of the information being kept from him up until now. If you have trouble getting him to listen to you, or he doesn't believe you, he can call me via the sound connection. I want you to see what he has to say about the open house and the boy and see if he makes similar connections that you did. If his thoughts are satisfactory allow him to carry out any plan he comes up with. He needs to take leading initiative into practice anyway. I will do as you see fit, master. I'm sure you'll be hearing from Tamura Shigaraki soon. I look forward to it. But that the warp gate disappeared in a vortex of indigo, leaving all for one alone to await his doctor's arrival. It's a little earlier than I had originally planned, the man mused, yet I believe this to be the opportunity I've been searching for. Young Izuku Midoriya, son of that all too kind and trusting Inko. How will you cope when all you thought you knew comes crumbling down? What? Izuku's mouth felt like it was full of ash. A few minutes ago he had been watching the news in high spirits, yet here he was now feeling like he'd been frozen by Todoroki's quirk. Are you trying to tell me there was no Hisashi Midoriya to begin with? Who did my mom meet all those years ago to have me then? There had to be somebody, all might. Who would do something like have a child with someone, erase her memories of him, implant false information in her head, leave her alone to raise his child, and send them dirty money, as support despite abandoning them? What the hell? Izuku didn't have to see his mentor to know his mentor was probably wincing at the cackiness of his language. He found he really didn't care at the moment. His mind was overrun desperately trying to think of a way to tell his mother that there was no Hisashi without making her faint. How would he explain the sudden lack of checks in the mail, due to the account providing for them being linked to incredible illegal activity? How was he going to bring up that her memories were most likely altered over a decade ago, and that the man who gave her the child she cherished hadn't left a trace of his existence anywhere? What was he going to do? Young Midoriya, All Might spoke soothingly. I knew the news would upset you, as it should, but please try to remain calm. Take a deep breath and focus on my voice. Knowing you hearing this might work you up into a panic attack, which I want to avoid if we can help it. Please just listen to me, my boy. Taking a long, shaky breath, Izuku forced himself to sit back down on the couch. His muscles were still locked tight, his throat just as dry as before, but now his eyes were shining with unshed tears. I am sorry all night. I just don't know how I'm going to tell any of this to my mom. She deserves to know, so I can't keep anything from her, but I'm worried her heart won't be able to take it. This whole situation is so messed up. I know it is. Sadly, there's not much the two of us can do, we must rely on the police force to continue their investigations. If they find any new information you will be the first to know after myself. Anyway, as for your mother I think it would be best if I explain what was found to her. You're already heavily emotionally drained by the news, so for your best interest, as well as her own health, I will make an appearance as simply a member of the UA faculty. She most likely will recognize me from when she picked you up at the police station a few days prior, but you can tell her I'm your mentor from school too, so she has an idea of our relationship without giving away my secret. Okay, he relented. When do you think you'll be over? I was thinking of stopping by later in the evening if that is alright with you. Your mother will be home by then, correct? She doesn't work weekends, but she will be back from shopping long before then. If you're stopping by in the evening anyway though, all might, why not just join us for dinner? I'm sure she wouldn't mind. It'll also make us feel better since you've been so helpful and we feel obligated to return the favor. All Might made a noise of embarrassment on the other side of the phone. Sheesh, kid. You really know how to tug on the old heartstrings. I can't refuse such an invitation after all that. It also might be helpful to stick around after I tell her the news anyway, on account having dinner together might lift her spirits. Thank you so much, Izuku said sincerely. His voice still carried a defined tiredness with it though, like the weight that had been lifted off of his shoulders, had yet to catch up with his body. My boy, you really thank me far too often. Helping people is what I do. I am a hero after all, aren't I? However, I suppose what I'm doing for you isn't because you're simply someone in need, one of my precious students, or even my successor. I'm doing this because you're invaluable to me, son. Your father hasn't a clue of what greatness he's missing out on. Watching you grow, even if it's only been the past year or so, has been a blessing in itself. You're a hero to me just as much as I'm a hero to you. Izuku's breath hitched, tears streaming down his face as he squeezed his eyes shut and bowed his head. Did he just call me what I think he did? Not only did he call me a hero, but I couldn't have been hearing that one word wrong, right? I could have sworn he called me son. All might. He asked through his sniffling. Yes, son. The laugh bubbled out of Izuku before he could stop it. He hadn't heard wrong after all. I don't think I'll ever be able to stop thanking you for everything you've done for me if I'm being honest. I just wanted to let you know. 
Also, I'm going to help my mom prepare the best dinner ever for tonight, so make sure you're hungry. All Might let out his own bark of laughter, and Izuku smiled when he heard his own mentor's large grin in the way he spoke over the line. I've always admired your honesty and drive, kid. I'm also sure dinner will be lovely. See you later tonight, okay? Just keep a cool head until then. I will. See you tonight, dad. Izuku didn't wait to hear what All Might had to say after hearing the distinct sound of a dropping phone. With a soft smile and shaky hand he hung up, letting his phone drop onto the couch as he sagged back into the furniture tiredly. He was only 15, but he felt like he'd experienced enough emotions to last him a lifetime. So you're telling me the master had a bunch of kids in the past in order to steal their quirks once they manifested? Is that right? Yes Tamura Shigaraki. That was why I originally had to discuss some things without you present, because the master hadn't informed you of his past contingency plans for gathering powerful quirks. That's the only reason you couldn't discuss anything in front of me? Shigaraki glared at the warp gate from behind a pale hand. It's not like I care if he has a bunch of quirkless NPCs running around. Seems like a big waste of time to me, considering he gets more quirks by kidnapping random teenagers and criminals from the streets. Why go to the trouble of having a bunch of snot-nosed brats and having the doctor keep an eye on their development? That means he would have had to show up at some point in the kid's life long enough to steal their quirk, have the doctor show them a fake x-ray of their foot to get them to believe they'd always been quirkless and erase the memories of him altogether from the kid. And mother involved. Gurujiri hummed thoughtfully. Lying to the younger villain was far too easy, which only reminded him how long he had to go before he was truly ready to follow in all for one's footsteps. Being deceived so effortlessly wasn't a good trait for a successful leader, villain or not, to have. You might not fully understand his motivations, Tamura Shigaraki, but even if he stopped that method of quirk collection quite a while ago those children still exist. That fact leads us to the matter at hand, actually, since it directly relates to the following secret I was told to share with you. A secret, huh? What sort of secret? Who else besides myself knows? Only the master, his doctor, and I are aware of this truth. Now, the master has already informed you of Izuku Midoriya's quirk and its origin. What would you think if I told you the green-haired boy you hate so much was quirkless until just last year? That master has been keeping tabs on the boy his entire life before his involvement with All Might at UA. Shigaraki's fingernails danced anxiously along his neck as his eyes narrowed even further. Why would the master have been keeping tabs on a quirkless nobody for that long? He didn't mention knowing the kid when I first showed him the brat's picture after they cheated at the USJ. Suddenly the boy's red eyes widened, fingers slowing down in their harsh digging. No. You have to be joking, Kurajiri. There's no way the two of them are related. A hero brat and a villain, as great as the master. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Even if you think it blasphemous, I'm afraid it is the truth. It does seem almost too ironic though, doesn't it? Well Kurajiri thought the development would have amused the young villain he forgot to take into account the boy's anger. In a fit of rage the shaggy-haired villain activated his quirk on the nearest thing he could wrap his hand around, which happened to be an empty glass that he'd been drinking out of earlier. As it crumbled into dust Kurajiri heaved a sigh of disappointment. He'd lost half a dozen glasses that way in the past week alone. No, it is not ironic. It's weird. How could such an annoyingly heroic brat like that be one of the master's sons? Sure his analytic skills might be similar, but he's just too good. He said the last word with a sneer. The way he said it also made it seem like he was choking down something sour. He's as far from master as anyone can possibly get. Perhaps he is, but that does not change the fact he is the last child that master had before switching to other ventures. With the police looking into the account attached to Izuku Midoriya, it was crucial you were informed of this information. I guess I get why the master waited to tell me now, especially since the brat pisses me off almost as much as All Might does. Probably would have killed him the moment I had my hand around his throat the other day if I'd been told any earlier. After a moment of silence, a light bulb seemed to go off in Shigaraki's head. Wait a second. Only we know that they're related, right? As of now that is correct. Imagine how that brat would react if we told him about this, the younger villain chuckled crazily as he dug deeper at his neck once more, eyes brightening with malicious excitement. His so-called hero worship of all might would become a big fat joke. I bet his classmates, no, the world would hate him for being a villain's son. There's no way he'd be allowed to continue at UA. For too long after that, not with how crazy the media is nowadays. He might just give up on being a hero altogether when the pressure gets too high for him to handle. Erratic laughter filled the room. Kurajiri simply watched as Shigaraki stood up from the stool he'd been sitting on, eyes more wild than before. And all might. I'm betting if he learned the truth he would be crushed. It would be like using a cheat code to whittle away the boss's health, making it easier to take him out once and for all. 
we could finally kill the symbol of peace. That we could, Tamura Shigaraki, as long as we have a good enough plan. That way it won't end like our last attempt at killing him. Shigaraki smiled gleefully, a look that would have sent chills up a civilian's spine. If we attack the school using a bunch of nouns and those annoying new recruits to cause as much chaos as possible, then the heroes will be too preoccupied protecting the visiting parents and students to focus too much on getting in between us and those hero course brats. Any damage caused there would be a bonus too, not to mention faith in the school would hit an all-time low. He was met with a satisfied nod. Well done. Keep thinking about the fine details of the attack and we can discuss it with the master once he's free later this evening. I believe he wishes to make an appearance at the UA as well. What? He's been in hiding for years. I think he wishes to use his alias as Izuku Midoriya's father in order to finally pay the boy a visit. He will likely wish to be the one that tells him and all might the news I just told you, but after that I'm sure he'll let you be the one to finish off the number one hero. I guess that makes sense. He hates that All Might even more than I do, so I suppose it's okay if he uses the cheat, so long as I get to deliver the final blow. Maybe I'll even be able to inflict some physical damage on the green-haired brat or kill some of his friends. But you probably could. As it is, I'm going to be gone for a bit in order to prepare some things in advance. Try not to disintegrate the new recruits while I'm gone. Shigaraki grunted. Whatever. But that the warp gate disappeared once more, leaving the successor to All for One to plan amongst himself. While he waited for his mom to return from grocery shopping, Izuku's itch to do something got the better of him. He began to do a little investigating of his own. The first thing he did was call Mitsuki Bakugo. He was thankful Kakin hadn't been the one to answer the phone, since he probably would have hung up immediately, but luck was with him today when a lively woman answered on the second ring. From there it didn't take long for him to ask some questions about Hisashi without seeming too random. Inko and I have been friends for years, but I really can't remember meeting your father. I think she spoke of him briefly every now and then. The details were always the same though, such as him being a businessman and him having a fire-breathing quirk. I can't recall ever meeting him. I'm pretty sure it was one of his friends who went to the courthouse with your mother in order to be a witness when they got their marriage license at the courthouse. They never had a fancy wedding otherwise I know I'd remember it since I would have been the maid of honor. Has something come up with your father to bring this up? Izuku easily deflected the question as simple curiosity, stating he was planning on asking his mother at dinner tonight about the same thing. He got off the phone with her soon after. Next he spent a while looking into the name Hisashi. Midoriya seemed to lack any kind of indication that it was special in any way other than containing a figure that was also in his name Izuku, Midoriya seemed to be a common last name. On the other hand, Hisashi held some interesting meanings. The Sashiburi, he mumbled, as read off of an online name meaning site, means something along the lines of it has been a while since I last saw you, huh? Did he pick the alias on purpose because he knew he'd abandon us? It could also mean a long time ago too. If that's the case, is the name's meaning significant in any way, did he pick it as a silly jab, or is it just random, and I'm reading too far into it? Ugh, why couldn't I just have a normal father instead of a... He trailed off bitterly, the word villain popping into his head as he went over the illegal and just downright shitty actions he knew his father had done. He was more of a villain than a regular civilian, wasn't he? He'd broken several laws in order to steal money for their sake. He was responsible for either directly or indirectly harming his mother by causing her memory loss due to illegal use of a quirk, which was a crime of the highest degree. He abandoned his family. How could Izuku not classify him as a villain after that? But the frustrated sigh he closed the tabs on his phone and set it down on the couch once more. Next, he brought his attention to the family registration sheet his mother had dug out earlier that morning. The form had been filled out just less than 17 years prior, meaning the city hall registrar hadn't recognized his mother's marriage until a few weeks before he had to have been conceived. The observation left his stomach feeling nauseous. From what he was gathering his father's goal, at least back when he met Inko, had just been to have a child. Why did go to the trouble of marrying her if that's all he wanted? Unless he did care enough to save face by making sure he wasn't illegitimate and that his mother wouldn't be looked down upon for having a child out of wedlock. Even so his father abandoned them after all of the trouble. It just doesn't add up, Izuku muttered. Why did he keep sending funds even after all this time? It makes even less sense than sending any money at all. He couldn't actually care about providing for us despite everything else, right? Of course not. Maybe it's just to make himself feel better there's no other logical explanation. He was so lost in thought that when the front door opened and closed it didn't even register in his brain. His green eyes kept staring a hole into the floor of the living room until his mother's bright voice jarred him from his thoughts. Izuku, honey. She called as she made her way into the living room after dropping the grocery bags off in the kitchen. 
I got ingredients for a soba dish, as well as a mix for a small cake on account of the guest we're having over. What's his or her name again? Um, his name is Yagi Tashinori. He's the teacher at UA that's been mentoring me since the beginning of the school year. Oh, so he's the one who's been helping you with your training. You've mentioned him a lot then. Yeah. I thought you should know that before he introduces himself so you don't think I invited some random stranger over. Anyway, do you want help in the kitchen? It's the least I can do after inviting him over before checking that it was okay with you first, he said sheepishly. Thank you for getting the stuff for dinner, by the way. Inko shook her head, a soft smile on her face at her son's words. It's alright, sweetie. I was just surprised you wanted to have a guest over at all. It's been quite some time since Misuki's boy has been over, and I honestly expected you to invite some of your classmates over before your mentor, with the way you gush about them. Oh well, I suppose I'll just have to wait another two days until I can meet them in person. Do you think they'll be interested in seeing the pictures of you from when you were little? Oh, I could show All Might the pictures of you dressed up, as him. Or the ones with you in the All Might pajamas. You were even cuter then than you are now, she sighed happily. Mom, Izuku blushed. Please don't show anybody those. It's so embarrassing. His mother just giggled at his protests, gesturing with a single hand for him to follow her into the other room. They had dinner to prepare after all. Later that night, just after the time when most people turned in for the night, Kurajiri went to Musatafu under his master's orders. It didn't take him long to find the address of the woman he was looking for. Under the cover of darkness he made his way to her home without anyone still on the streets noticing him, meaning when he knocked on the door of the small home, there was no one to witness him warping the young adult away. Please do not struggle, the villain instructed, as he deposited the woman onto the floor somewhat gently. Terrified, the woman could only scream for help, as she scrambled to find the nearest exit. She didn't get the chance to get very far, however, because a hulking body blocked her path. She paled drastically, her screams cutting off altogether, as she struggled to breathe. W what is that thing? Why did you bring me here? Please let me go home. Her form shook violently, as she begged, eyes glistening with tears, as fear consumed her. Gurujiri stood resolute. I apologize, young miss, but you possess something of value to the League of Villains. Your quirk is called glamour, correct? It allows you to fool everybody around you into thinking you look like whatever and whoever you wish. With a quirk like that you could make people think you had blue hair, a few extra arms, or maybe even that you are a man. League of Villains. B but it only lasts for 15 minutes at a time. That's not useful at all. A new voice broke in then, causing the kidnapped woman to freeze. Don't sell yourself short, young lady. All for one commented nonchalantly as he walked out of the shadows. When his disfigured face came into the light the woman's fearful eyes temporarily filled with pity, a look to which the old villain detested more than anything. All quirks have their use. Yours, for example, will serve me well. Naomu. Before she could figure out what he meant by that, the awaiting orders by the door were behind the woman in an instant. It used its large black hands to grab the victim around her waist and hold her slightly in the air, leaving her unable to get away as all for one approached her slowly. Don't worry. You'll feel a little tug at first, but then it will be like ripping off a band-aid. After that you won't feel a thing. As he raised his hand to the woman's face, Kurajiri found himself turning away from the sight. When a loud scream cut through the room like a knife before going quiet altogether the warp gate could only detach somewhat from the situation at hand. Watching someone have their quirk ripped away from them, even for a villain who had killed others in the past, left him feeling just the tiniest bit of sympathy. And fear. Mom, are you nervous? Inko Midoriya nearly jumped at her son's question as she gazed past the gate surrounding Yue. They had been about to walk in when she stopped in complete awe at seeing the school for the first time. It was huge for a high school, that much was obvious, and the security was state of the art. The grounds went on for miles in nearly every direction. She had known her son had achieved something amazing by making it into the number one hero program in the world, but actually seeing the place in person versus a picture online made it all the more real. Maybe a little bit, she admitted. I never realized just how huge your school was. She followed her boy past the entryway, the two of them making their way to a series of tables stationed just inside the gates. It was at these tables Ectoplasm had his clones verifying the visitor's identification and checking all of them in. Inko handed her ID to one of the pro hero's clones, and Izuku glanced around while they waited for her to be checked in. Yue. The campus was packed despite the open house only starting roughly 10 minutes ago. Business course, general education, support course, and a few familiar faces from the hero course could be seen showing their parents around the grounds. Izuku noticed with a small smile that Shinsu was among those outside. The purple-haired general student was chatting easily with who Izuku assumed to be the boy's parents. 
Izuku began to wonder what quirks his parents had as the trio made their way inside the building, effectively distracting him from the families approaching him and his mother from behind. Eku-kun. At the sound of the nickname, Izuku turned around with a large smile on his face. Yuraka and Iida, along with who he presumed to be their parents, gestured for the two to join them away from the check-in table. Yuraka kun Iida-kun. He said joyously as he and his mother made to join the other two families. I guess you were right about being the first ones to meet my mom. Anyway, this is my mother Inko. Mom, this is Yuraka and Iida. It's nice to meet you, Midoriya-san. The two students greeted each other enthusiastically. Iida even stuck out his hand for a handshake, something he viewed as the proper way to introduce oneself to someone. It's a pleasure to meet my little Izuku's friends, the older Midoriya responded kindly while shaking Iida's hand. He sure told me a lot about the two of you. Iida, he goes on and on about how fast you are with your engine quirk, and he never misses a chance to commend your leadership skills. He also talks a lot about how great you are at martial arts on top of your gravity quirk, your Raka. And let me just say you're even cuter than he described you. Mom, Izuku protested. You said you wouldn't embarrass me. She waved off her son's whining with an eye roll. I'm not embarrassing you, Izuku, although if you want me to, I do have those pictures of you from preschool in my purse. The look of horror on his face made Yuraka and herself giggle before she went on to speak to the two kids. Anyway, Yuraka, Iida, you two are the ones that walk home with Izuku, right? You've been such good friends to him. I wanted both of you to know how much that means to me, she said with a small sniffle, finding herself worked up with gratitude. I've been meaning to thank you both for looking after my precious little Izuku. Yuraka smiled sheepishly, a blush lighting up her cheeks, as her dad nudged her knowingly. You're welcome, Midoriya-san, but it's really no trouble. He's our friend. That's right, Iida added. Although, in all honesty, all of class 1 looks after one another. Midoriya-kun has many friends and classmates looking out for him just as he looks after us. Inko found herself wiping away a straight tear. That means the world to me, you too. It really does. Now, would you mind introducing us to your parents? As far as introductions went, it took over an hour for Inko to meet everyone in class 1A's families. She was also introduced to the Shinsu and Hatsume families in between. When the halfway point of the open house was reached, however, and the UA. Pampas was at its busiest, there was an announcement over the intercoms for students wishing to introduce their parents to their homeroom teachers, to make their way to their homeroom classroom for a group introduction. Izuku was glad for the arrangement because he'd lost track of most of his friends a while ago. Your homeroom teacher is a racerhead, right? An underground hero. Yep. He's pretty amazing. You should have seen him in action at the USJ and during the final exams. He's practically a sleepy caterpillar by day, but a kick-butt ninja at night. What about Tashinori? He's a teacher, but we haven't come across him all day. Izuku rubbed the back of his neck nervously. Oh, well he works in the office when he's not teaching due to his poor health, so if we don't see him he's probably either busy or taking it easy today. Being around so many people might wear him out quicker than usual. We'll get to see All Might by the end of the day though. He's supposed to be here for the last hour of the open house. Inko nodded, trailing just behind her son, as he escorted them throughout the building until they were in front of the large door leading to his classroom. Why is it so big? She asked curiously. Izuku merely shrugged, about to voice his theories when the door opened to reveal Izawa in all his baggy-eyed glory. Hurry up, Midoriya. I want to get my introduction over with as quickly as possible, so I might actually have a chance to speak with everyone's parents. At this rate I'm not going to be able to take a nap until tomorrow morning. The green-haired student assured him they were just about to head in. With a quirky smile he led his mother into the classroom where everybody else was already gathered. All things considered, Azawa hadn't said many words at all. On the other hand, what he had said held quite a bit of weight. It started with a basic introduction. Within the span of five minutes he went on to praise his class as being the most promising class he'd ever had the pleasure of teaching, which filled the students and parents with some well-deserved pride. From there he made a point to assure the parents that their children were being well looked after and would be trained to become the best heroes they could be. By the end of his speech, which hadn't lasted longer than six or seven minutes, the class was buzzing with an air of positivity. It was partially because of those happy feelings being excluded that what was about to happen next would catch them so off guard. Like most moments just before a life-changing event occurred, Izuku was unaware disaster was just around the corner. Literally. Currently he was spending his time oblivious and amongst friends. Todoroki's mother was in an avid discussion with Inko and Mitsuki about their son's performances in the sports festival from a few months prior, and the rest of Class 1A's families were all gathered in their usual classroom, introducing one another to the parents. 
from where he stood with Yuraka, Iida, Todoroki, and a fuming Kakin, he wanted to get his mother away from everyone before she had a chance to embarrass him. Izuku could see Jiro's parents talking to Yaoi Rozu's mother, while Kirishima, Kiminari, Mina, and Siro chatted with each other's families. He couldn't help but laugh when he overheard them gushing proudly about the four of them being the founding members of the Baka Squad, to which Bakugo overheard and decided he needed to knock some sense into those idiots. Hey, you're Raka kun Iida kun Todoroki kun Izuku started as an idea struck him. Do you think your parents would be up to getting an early dinner together after the open house is over? We don't have to go anywhere fancy. Honestly, I could just go for some ramen or rice dish, but maybe we could go to one of those American fast food burger joints that just opened up in the city. My mom and I thought it might be neat to try. What do you guys think? Iraka's eyes lit up in excitement. Oh, I'd love that. I can ask my folks once they're done talking to the teachers. They are big fans of the pros that teach here, she admitted with a pained grin. It's sort of embarrassing. It's common to admire heroes like those who teach here, Iida argued before turning his attention back to Izuku. Anyway, Midoriya kun, I think that it's a wonderful idea. I'll ask my mother and father about it once they're done talking to 13. Before coming here I had no idea they were in the same class together in high school, let alone that they were old friends. Todoroki seemed a bit more troubled by the suggestion. I'm not sure if I can join you guys. As always sensei only got my mother permission to visit you a, so the hospital is expecting her back by a specific time. If we go with you all to dinner she might get in trouble should she show up late. I don't want to risk it. That's too bad. Maybe you can join us afterwards. Izuku offered. You two took a taxi here, right? We wouldn't mind waiting until you got back to eat. The hospital isn't too far from where the restaurant is. Actually, Iida broke in before Todoroki could answer, my parents drove us here. There is plenty of room in the car for us to bring the two of you along. We could drop your mother off, let you say your goodbyes, and meet everyone for dinner at the designated location, all before the others arrived on account of them having taken the train. It would be no trouble whatsoever. Todoroki seemed taken back, as if he hadn't expected someone to reach out to him with such kindness. It took him a moment to realize this was probably part of the whole being friends thing he was still getting used to. Once he understood that he let himself smile softly at the offer. Thank you Iida. We'll gladly take you up on your offer so long as your parents are fine with it. From there the four of them began discussing American cuisine, Yuraka looking up what kind of food the restaurant served when Izuku overheard someone say his mother's name. It wouldn't have caught his attention like it did if said voice didn't sound so unnerving. Long time no see. Izuku spun around curiously just in time to watch the newcomer show off a charming smile, but it instantly rubbed him the wrong way. Something was off about it. Was it fake? Either that, or he wasn't smiling out of joy. Inko seemed perplexed that the man knew her name and spoke to her like an old friend because she had no idea who he was. Even as she took in his short black hair, green eyes, and tall, suited build, she couldn't remember meeting him before. I'm sorry, but have we been introduced? I can't seem to remember your name. Are you one of the kids' fathers? It was at this moment Mitsuki stared at the stranger in suspicion, her red eyes flashing with unease when the man let out a disconcerting chuckle. I know it has been a very long time, but you don't recognize when your own husband is standing in front of you? I'm hurt, Inko, I truly am. Like a switch had been flipped, Izuku frantically whispered to Iida for him to get All Might or one of the other teachers. He hadn't had a chance to tell any of his friends about the news concerning his father, but the class representative seemed to understand something was wrong. But Linko took a step back from the apparent Hisashi, the engine quirked hero in training, nonchalantly made his way out of the room before taking off to find a teacher. He'd have to apologize for running in the halls later. Hisashi? Why you can't be him? Hisashi doesn't exist. Izuku moved so he was directly in front of his mother as she spoke. Getting in between her and the so-called Hisashi, this made the man's attention fall on him. Around them some of the class 1A students began to realize something was going on due to the protective display their classmate was showing. The fact there was a scowl on the usually cherry boy's face was what really set alarms off though. Izuku, my boy, it's nice to finally meet you. You're a couple months away from being 16, aren't you? You've grown up so much while I've been away. Shut up, he retorted harshly. Beside him Yuraka seemed stunned to hear him speak like that. You are not my father. You're an imposter. There is no Hisashi Midoriya, so why don't you tell us who you really are and how you got in here? The anger in his voice startled him almost more than his mother and classmates, but he couldn't bring himself to think it was unnecessary. This man had to know that messing with his mother and him like this was not okay. Hisashi shook his head dismissively, pulling out an ID from the pocket of his dress pants. He held it up so Izuku could clearly see Hisashi Midoriya printed alongside his picture. 
Izuku wasn't having it. An ID is easy enough to fake, he said with a glare. Did you just come here because the police figured out the account and your name was caught up in illegal activities and shut down? Or were you scared because they are looking into your real identity since the one you used to marry my mom was a lie? Either way, you're not my father. And you made a really stupid decision to come to a school taught by pro heroes. Actually, I believe I've made a wise decision, my boy. You'll find I don't make many choices without careful calculation. It was silent in the room for a moment, all conversation having quieted a few seconds before he'd been done speaking. The quiet didn't last long, however, because suddenly an alarm was going off that caught everyone off guard. Looks like my successor is right on time, the man spoke just as his form shifted before everyone's eyes. Izuku, along with everyone else in the classroom, looked at the intimidating figure standing where Hisashi had just been. They took in the malicious grin and ruined their faces with looks of horror. And I suppose you were right, Izuku, when you said there was no Hisashi Midoriya. It's always been me all along. Hisashi was just an alias, however, I am very much your father. That is the undeniable truth. Timing couldn't have been better for the villain, as he noticed a serious-looking All Might enter the room just to freeze with shock and anger at seeing his enemy's face. All for one. The villain scoffed at the hero's show of bravado, already tired of his enemy's demanding presence. Well isn't this just perfect? All Might, you've arrived just in time for the big reveal. What are you talking about? The number one hero questioned, his usual smile showing no hint of making an appearance. You have three seconds before I send you flying out of this building if you even think about laying a hand on my students. The villain's returning grin was chilling to say the least. I myself have no plans to hurt your students, All Might. What my successor does, on the other hand, is none of my concern. The only one I'll be fighting today is you, but before that I just thought I'd stop by to visit my son during the open house. It's our first time meeting after all. You've gotten to know him pretty well though, haven't you? Unease flitted across All Might's face. What exactly are you saying? What do you say, Izuku my boy? Want to tell All Might that you've finally met your father after all this time? You look so much more like your mother, but with a quick DNA test, you'll find there's more villain than hero running through those veins. Izuku was aware of blood roaring in his ears as he took a step back, his mother's hand catching his shoulder as she worriedly called his name. His mind was not making the connection between her words and him though. All he could focus on was the man that was his mentor's greatest enemy telling him that he was his son. Like it or not, all for one continued, completely aware of Izuku's internal struggle, well there might not be a Hisashi, you've indeed always had a father. I had hoped you would have stayed quirkless and out of my sight like the rest of my children before you, but like Tamura said you are quite intelligent even if you are annoying. It's a shame you weren't born with a quirk, otherwise I would have surely chosen you as my successor over him, but like the other failures you weren't born, ready to take up the mantle of hatred like Tamura was. The doctor confirmed at the moment he told your mother and you about your quirkless status. As it stands my current successor will do just fine. He's the one who planned the attack going on outside this building right now, after all. He's also looking forward to killing you himself. The air became charged as the students in the room tensed for a fight, screaming having made its way from outside early on in his speech. That being said, it was interesting to meet you for the first and last time, my boy. But the condescending wave, all for one's form became surrounded by a mass of black liquid. He turned to All Might once again just before he warped out of sight. I'll be waiting for you outside, All Might. You have one minute to find me before I start window shopping for some useful quirks. The quirkless population could always be a bit higher. All Might spared not a single second getting out of there, jumping clean across the room and breaking through the window with a few simple contractions of rippling muscles. From the intercom principal Nedzu gave the students and parents permission to fight using their quirks while assuring more heroes were on the way. He went on to identify the known villains having been spotted, detailing how their quirks worked and advising the best way to capture them, but much of what was said was lost to Izuku as he felt his chest constrict. The green-haired boy knew someone was shaking him. He could feel the hands clutch his shoulders desperately, a voice calling his name behind the overwhelming sound of static. He wanted to say something, anything, yet all he could do was stare in the direction All Might went off in. I can't really be all for one son, can I? He questioned himself. It made sense that my father could be a villain, but if proof was found that I am actually related to him, then what will I do? All for one's quirk is the reason one for all even exists. He was the reason All Might is weakening, the reason he'd lost his stomach, the reason evil is beginning to amass at an alarming rate. All for one is the epitome of evil this day and age. All Might is his exact opposite, the symbol of hope and justice for everyone. I want to be just like All Might, so I can't be a villain's son. I can't. 
his thought spiraled dangerously, self-doubt and illogical guilt nearly sending him into a panic attack, however, a strong punch to the face knocked him back into coherence before that could happen. Hey Deku. He made out Bakugo's voice before he registered his childhood friend standing in front of him. The explosive blonde's hands were sparking, the familiar sight distracting Izuku from the pain in his cheek and grounding him to reality. When he finally managed to lift his eyes to the owner of those hands, Izuku was surprised to make out an emotion other than anger present in his crimson gaze. Don't you dare listen to a word that ugly ass said. He roared while poking the green-haired male in the chest none too gently. You won't know shit until someone can confirm if what he said isn't a steaming pile of lies. Even if what he said turns out to be true, it changes nothing, he said, as he let out a small explosion, his entire body visibly trembling with anger. You've always said you wanted to be a hero, right? Then stop crying like the useless Deku you are and start being the Deku that your shitty hero name is supposed to stand for. There are a bunch of villains outside and people in danger. You want to save them, don't you? I won't have a half-assed wannab hero as one of my stepping stones, so let's get out there and kick some ass. Izuku could only gape at Bakugou, the tears he hadn't realized had been running down his cheeks when he'd spaced out earlier suddenly apparent. He quickly wiped them away, finally taking in his old friend's crude but helpful advice. Around the mother students had already made their way out of the classroom and outside to where the fighting was. When he noticed his mother was waiting to see what he'd do, a few other parents watching the fight outside from the relative safety of the classroom, he realized Bakugou must have told Yuraka, Iida, and Todoroki to go on ahead of them. Something about that caused a feeling of gratitude to stir in his chest, and that feeling told him exactly what he needed to do next. Okay, Kaken. Izuku said with a small but unwavering smile. Let's give those villains hell. For a second, Bakugo seemed like he was struggling to fight off a grin. Instead he merely shook his head. Whatever, nerd. Doubt yourself again, and I'll punch you harder next time. I'll count on that. As Izuku and Bakugo took off, the two of them about to head straight into the chaos that was taking place outside, Inko's plea for them to stay there in the classroom was stopped by a pale hand on her shoulder. She turned slightly to see the grey eyes of the elder Todoroki. Let them go, Midoriya-san. They'll be okay. How do you know that? He's gotten hurt more than once at this school, from those villains. What if? Our sons aren't pushovers, Inko. Mitsuki cut her off testily from where she was gazing out the window. Even if you don't trust the school to keep them safe, trust our boys to kick those villains from here to Tokyo. Inko's frown and worry persisted, but she nodded nonetheless. Her little Izuku wanted to be a hero after all. She needed to trust he could take on those who did wrong and get used to the fact that even saving people had its dangers. Oh, Izuku, she whispered to herself as she went to stand next to the two other women by the window. Please be alright. Barely five minutes had passed when Izuku felt the ground beneath him disappear. From a few yards away Bakugo wasn't fast enough to stop the other boy from falling into the warp gate that was Kurajiri, leaving him to stare at the spot he had just been standing before letting out a scream of rage. On the other side of campus, an area far enough away to keep the fight between All Might and All for One, separate from the madness that was happening just inside the gates, Izuku was dropped from the air none too kindly. In an instant he was back on his feet with One for All racing through his veins. When he took notice of Shigaraki and Kurajiri surveying him from not even five yards away, his eyes narrowed. Shigaraki, he stated challengingly. His attention briefly flickered to where the number one hero and his greatest enemy were fighting. He made a mental note to alert the other pros of the fight as soon as possible, worry churning in his gut that All Might could use backup once they were dealt with. Long time no see, friend. How's your neck feeling? The villain mocked, voice fluctuating into that same false casual tone he'd used at the mall to catch him off guard. Izuku ignored him. What do you and all for one think you can achieve by attacking the UA? You're getting captured left and right, and regardless of how prepared all for one is, All Might is going to win today. That quirk won't be used to harm others ever again. Your gamble isn't going to pay off. Is that what you think? The grey-haired villain spread his arms out from either side, his palms facing towards the sky, and fingers splaying almost dramatically. When he spoke his determined tone was laced with maniacal giggles. You have no idea how wrong you really are, you annoying brat. All Might is on the verge of losing everything. His powers, his protege, and his life will all be lost all thanks to Master, and I Master will knock him down until he can't fight anymore, and once he's immobilized Kurajiri will warp us over to them. Your precious hero will be forced to watch as I take the quirk he passed onto you right in front of him. He won't be able to do a thing as his precious successor and quirk are lost once and for all, he finished with a laugh. After that, killing him will be child's play. He has all for one's quirk. Izuku thought, realizing the older villain had been bluffing earlier in the classroom about stealing random quirks. 
I can't let him get away then. That evil needs to end with him. You really think it's going to work out exactly as planned for you? There's no way All Might will lose. Ah, but he will. It's thanks to your existence, actually, that Master's Cheat will work so well at knocking that stupid hero off his game. Honestly I can't believe he waited this long to finally use it. Anyway, you're a big help to the fall of All Might, kid. Had I not been informed of the Master's contingency plans a couple days ago, I never would have thought you and him to be related. We aren't. Izuku retorted angrily, barely able to reel himself in before he lost his cool. Shigaraki grinned. Still don't believe it. Remember the doctor who told you that you were quirkless. When did you have to switch to another primary doctor because he left? Right around the time All Might got into a big fight with Toxic Chainsaw, was Izuku's immediate answer. I don't see what that has to do with weight. His fight with All for One was about that time over seven years ago too, which was a few weeks before we were told he transferred to another city. Bingo. See, I knew you weren't that stupid. Your doctor had to leave because he needed to patch up Master after his fight with the number one hero. It wasn't like he needed to keep an eye on the Master's quirkless children anymore anyway, since the Master had taken me in soon after that fight. Anyway, if you still don't believe it, the Master's DNA is on file in the police database after they got it from the fight scene all those years ago. I'm sure if you send some of your own DNA in for testing you'll find that it's an exact match. Izuku fisted his hands to hide the way they shook with fear. So? He asked with mock confidence. Even if we are related that doesn't make him any father of mine. A real father wouldn't think sending money could make up for his absence, his villainy, for abandoning his wife to raise his contingency plan alone. A father is like a pillar of strength, someone who supports and disciplines the child they love unconditionally. Shigaraki cut him off with a bored sigh, the villain's nails scraping eerily across the side of his neck. Yeah, I don't care how you feel. I'm more excited to see how the heroes and students at this school turn on you. They'll soon be pressured into kicking out the quirkless son of the biggest villain since quirks began. Once the media finds out who you are and that I took away your quirk, you'll be kicked to the curb like the trash you are. And just how are you planning on taking my quirk? I'd rather die than give it to you willingly. They have an objective amid at the reveal of information, Shigaraki let out another unnerving laugh. You won't be able to stop yourself from denying any request I make then, will you, little hero? Izuku had enough. Green eyes widening with anger at the news his friend was being targeted like that, Izuku charged up one for all and launched himself at the hand lot and villain. You won't be stealing anybody's quirk today, Shigaraki. Due to his newfound control of his quirk, Izuku was able to land a clean punch across Shigaraki's face before Kurajiri could stop him. All the warp gate could do was watch as his teammate picked himself off of the ground painfully, the hand previously covering his face having fallen to the ground and leaving the younger villain seething with rage. You little brat. I might not be allowed to kill you, but Master never said I couldn't leave you without a few limbs. Kurajiri, stay out of this until I tell you otherwise. That stupid UA. The uniform is going to get an improvement once I add a nice shade of red to the mix. Izuku got himself into his usual fighting stance. When he raised his arms up in preparation for Shigaraki's approach, the villain having started sprinting towards him while speaking to his partner, the hero in training remembered something important. He was scared. If he didn't stop Shigaraki, then Shinsu might lose his quirk. If he didn't end this fight soon in order to get All Might back up, then All Might could get gravely injured again. If he didn't end this fight soon, more innocent people would get hurt. There were so many uncertainties leaving the heavy feeling of fear weighing his body down. That only meant one thing. A smile made its way to his face. His body lighting up with the power of one for all, he met Shigaraki's attack with one of his own. Charging me head on. That's your plan. Izuku found himself taunting with a shaky grin, his body jumping easily out of the villain's reach. You'll have to be quicker than that. Shigaraki was seething openly, chapped lips and bloodshot eyes sending chills up the young hero's spine. You'll regret making a fool of me. I'll kill you. Izuku chanced another comment, instantly not regretting it. Sure you will. By the way, Kakin said almost the exact same threat to someone during the sports festival, and let me just tell you it sounded much more intimidating coming from him. Some distance away, All Might was reaching his limit. The flame of One for All had been reduced to a pitiful ember by this point. While All for One was nowhere near as strong as he'd been several years ago, the symbol of peace was struggling to keep his form up. If he reverted back before the fight was finished there would likely be no stopping the villain. You know, All Might, the suited man said, you've been very quiet the entire fight. Is there something on your mind? The hero didn't answer, instead opting to deliver a Texas smash to the other's stomach. It knocked all for one back and did some damage, however, it didn't stop him from running his conniving mouth. I suppose I don't need you to tell me. I can already guess it's because of the news I shared with young Midori earlier. 
Honestly though I hadn't even anticipated the irony of one of my brother's foolish legacies, choosing my own son to become a successor. What were the chances you would pick one of my quirkless failures to be the next symbol of peace out of anybody else in the world? The poor boy must be devastated right now after learning the truth. You must be too. That's not true. Really? You expect me to believe you're okay with him staying your successor? I'm sure you wouldn't have to do much convincing for him to give your quirk to someone else. Knowing what I do about that brat's nature he'll be guilty no matter what you tell him. Giving away the quirk won't help him much though, because once the truth gets outside these gates the entire world will turn on him. Shut up, all for one. But the lightning fast hit, all for one was forced into the defensive once more. It was then All Might finally gained the grounds to speak. He might be his father by blood, but Izuku is my son. What I saw in him hasn't changed. He'll still become the next symbol of peace regardless of your attempts to shatter him, which he won't because he's got his friends to hold him together. His heroic spirit is stronger than your tricks, all for one. You will never be able to break that. Perhaps I won't, but my successor just might. He's already got a plan to take my brother's troublesome quirk back with the help of some quirks he's planning to steal. He has been so excited to try out his new power. All Might's eyes widened, his fists unclenching involuntarily. You already gave him your quirk. It's not like I have much use for it anymore. He has enough, and between him and my faithful doctor the means to make more if needed are there. As for me, I have just the quirks I need to make sure you fall. For all the time Shigaraki whined about cheating, Izuku thought, as he narrowly avoided being warped into the hand Laden villain's path, he sure hates to fight alone. It took all of a couple minutes for him to order Kurajiri to help him. What a hypocrite. I've sent the man flying a few times by hitting that neck armor of his, but he just keeps coming back. If I'm not careful they'll run me out of stamina before the fight is over. I need to end this now. Taking a gamble, Izuku feigned getting tired. Within seconds he was able to fake a too slow reaction time. Kurajiri took advantage of his slip-up nearly instantaneously, creating a portal below him, just as he was about to jump away again. I've got you now, you little brat. Shigaraki shouted, as another portal opened up in front of the younger villain. The angry teenager leapt at the swirling mass of mist, just as Izuku came tumbling out. One for all lit up his middle finger more than usual, his plan having been to break it in order to blow Shigaraki to the ground in hopes of knocking him unconscious, but unfortunately for him, he neither anticipated the change of direction through the gate, nor Shigaraki charging him with such frenzy. That meant five Ashen fingers made contact with the back of his shoulder as he fell to the ground. Before he could use his quirk to send Shigaraki flying, part of his uniform and the top few layers of skin had already begun to flake off. Izuku fraught off a pained scream as he felt wetness lie down his back and soak into the fabric of his shirt. Channeling his quirk into his body more precisely, he jumped up just enough to get out of Shigaraki's reach before flicking his finger with more power than he could handle yet below the power of a maxed out blow. The sight of the younger villain being thrown directly onto the concrete below them and hitting his head enough to knock him out was something Izuku wished he had seen, however, he was already flying towards Kurajiri. The warp gate attempted to get out of the way of Izuku's next overpowered attack, but he was too late. His neck armor shattered as the power from two broken fingers slammed into him and sent him flying into the air. Now that they're dealt with it's time to get All Might some backup, the hero in training thought as he prepared to run towards the school. His broken fingers throbbed and his upper back and shoulder burned where the open wound met air, yet he could still fight. He had to keep fighting. There were people who needed saving and despite being the number one hero that included All Might. Izuku made the mistake of glancing to where his maybe biological father and father figure were battling. What he saw made his heart rate go into overdrive, every fiber of his being pushing him in the direction where one of the two strongest people in the world was about to lose everything. Seems you're all out of time, aren't you, All Might? All for one mocked as he took an All Might skeletal form. The costume sagged around the blonde man's thin shoulders, blood dripping from his mouth as he grimaced in pain. And unfortunately for you Tamura is late, which means I get the pleasure of putting you out of your misery myself. The suited villain began walking over to where the number one hero stood breathing laboriously. His arm contorted into a mass of metal parts and machinery with a sharpened edge not dissimilar to a lance, the size of which was completely overkill for stabbing the weakened man. All Might readied himself silently for his final punch, an attack he knew would pull him from his crime-fighting career forever, but before either of the men could attack a blur of what appeared to be green lightning crashed onto the ground between them. I won't let you hurt All Might anymore. Izuku shouted, his back to his mentor. He stood protectively between the hero and villain without flinching, despite the horrifying weapon being pointed in his direction. The blood staining what was left of his school uniform stood out in stark contrast with his pale skin and green hair, something All Might worriedly made note of the moment he saw it. 
even with that injury, and the dark purple fingers on his right hand he did not tremble. He merely gazed at the spot All for One's eyes would be, demeanor demanding the villain's full attention. All for One seemed mildly impressed, a sound of begrudging acknowledgement escaping the man, as he appraised his son once more. The great metal weapon shifted slightly, as he let the tip of it rest on the ground a few inches away from Izuku's feet. When said teenager didn't even glance down at the weapon capable of death so close to him, All for One actually smiled. The sight alone put Izuku on edge. You really are your mother's son, aren't you? That determined look in your eyes is the exact same. It's a shame she allowed you to dream of being a hero when your quirklessness could have easily shaped you into a villain worth following me. I would never have become like you. Izuku retorted, fists clenching tighter at the notion. That's what most villains think before something happens to change their minds, my boy. People's ideals are more easily swayed than you might believe. Not everyone is told they can become a hero, but nobody tells them they cannot become a villain. Izuku ignored the truth in his statement in favor of shaking his head, anger coursing through his voice, as struggled to speak without wavering. Stop calling me your boy. You're no father of mine, even if what you said was true. Regardless of my blood I would never have helped you no matter the situation. I was ostracized and bullied my entire life because I didn't have a quirk, he admitted quietly before raising his voice again, and the thought of being a villain instead of a hero didn't come across my mind even once. Hurting people is wrong no matter how you justify it. You want to kill All Might so evil can rule the streets. Shigaraki wants people to live in fear instead of a so-called false sense of heroic protection. Neither of those things benefits anybody except for villains like you. Stopping you is the only way to stop innocent people from having to live their lives in fear, so I'll do anything to prevent you from having your way. All for one shook his head. You say you'll do anything, yet standing before me right now would you really be willing to die for such a claim? It's true I had been planning to make you watch my protege destroy your hero, before taking my brother's troublesome quirk for his own, but, as long as the quirk is out of the hands of annoying heroes like you forever I would be satisfied all the same. Knowing that, there is no chance that you could beat me in a serious fight. Trying to stop me would be pointless. It's not pointless. I won't just give you what you want, so if you want to get to All Might you'll have to go through me first. Green eyes flashed with determination, the fear in them overrun by a fierce protectiveness that would have warmed All Might's heart if he could see it. As it were, all the number one hero could do was order the boy to get out of there. Of course that boy didn't respond to the hero's wishes. Instead, Izuku flashed a small thumbs up at his mentor with his uninjured hand. I'm sorry, All Might, but I'm not leaving you. Izuku apologized for his disobedience. You look like you needed help, so I'm not leaving until I know you're safe. Such wasted potential, all for one chimed in, his voice dripping with disappointment. His arm rose in the air, the giant metal weapon seeming to lift off of the ground effortlessly. In the span of a second the jagged point was leveled at Izuku's chest. I might have even offered you a spot at Shigaraki's side if I thought you could be swayed away from this path, but we both know you'll die a hero before thinking of living as a villain. I suppose if that is the case then all there is left to do is to say goodbye. One moment, the weapon was in the air. Goodbye, Izuku Midoriya. One for all lit up the greenette's body, but he wasn't faster than his father. Izuku. In the next moment, metal was tearing into flesh without an ounce of mercy. It was a strangled cry of pain, a green and red blur, a roar of pure rage, and two displays of one for all coursing through the veins of heroes. Even if one of those displays of power would be for the last time. All things considered, the villains put up a pretty decent fight. If they had taken into account the sheer power of caring parents and the strength at which they could fight when their children were in danger, then they might have planned accordingly. As it was, even over a dozen and some adolescent villains couldn't last too long against 39 hero core students, dozens of support courses, and general students and their quirk-endowed families. By the time backup arrived there were only a couple that persisted to evade capture. That meant some of the pros were trying to round up the injured or missing. The Kugo, Azawa caught the boy's attention, as they worked with a few others to divert a struggling creature into the path of Cementos, who in turn quickly encased a raging beast into a cube of cement. Where is Midoriya? He's usually in the middle of the fighting, but I haven't seen him at all in the past 15 minutes. I was separated from him early on when that purple bastard opened a gate beneath the nerd's feet. The teacher's eyes narrowed. That long ago, huh? I need to inform some of the other staff to begin searching the grounds for him immediately. I want you to round up the rest of your classmates and tell them to return to the school until Nedzu has announced the threat has been fully neutralized. What? The blonde seemed outraged at the notion of being sent inside like some helpless kid. If you think I'm just going to stop fighting now when there's still ass to kick, then. Now is not the time to argue with me like a child, the homeroom teacher reprimanded, eyes flashing behind his yellow goggles. 
the rest of the pros are going to find and back up all night wherever he's off fighting by himself, so I'm trusting you too. Whatever he was about to say was cut off, as what sounded like a huge explosion caused the air the pressure to drop. Everyone that wasn't still working on rounding up villains stilled and went silent as the clouds above them stirred. It was only moments later when it started to rain that the pros leapt into action at once. Ein, I'm giving you permission to assist me. You can come with me, as long as you only act to get Midoriya out of the picture though. Azawa told Bakugo, as the two of them took off towards the source of the weather-altering attack. The pros can't fight with their full strength if there's someone in danger, so make it your priority to get him out of there, so we can capture the last of the villains. DCH was the only answer the teacher got in response, but by the annoyed look on the explosive teenager's face, it was enough to know he understood. Several minutes later, the two of them reached the general area from where the shockwave originated. Half a dozen other pros joined them from either side, as they finally got close enough to where the fight had been to see three figures. Two of them were on the ground, and one was kneeling over the body of the smallest figure. The Kugo's blood chilled when he noticed the form being cradled to a skeleton that looked suspiciously like All Might's chest had Izuku's green hair. There was also a substantial puddle of blood underneath them already becoming diluted due to the rain. The skeletal figure looked up at the approach, desperation plain in his blue eyes. Somebody get the recovery girl immediately, the man tried to say with some authority. To Azawa it sounded more like begging. He's lost a lot of blood, and he's unconscious. Please, hurry. One of the pros immediately turned around to follow the order. All might, as always stated plainly once the group stood before the hero and student. We are going to have a long talk about what the hell happened to my student. Before that, however, he turned to the other pros. Kamui, use your vines to restrain the villain. Anybody else that has a quirk able to reinforce his binding make sure to do so and then bring the villain to the school for further precautionary restraining. He is not to be taken lightly even while unconscious. Principal Nedzu will be able to direct the authorities on how to deal with him, so make sure to find him as well. The pros listened, but not without glancing worriedly at All Might's new and pitiful form. For a few seconds neither All Might nor Azawa spoke. That was far too long for Bakugo. What are you idiots doing just standing there? He found himself yelling in rage, pushing past his teacher and grabbing Izuku from All Might with a gentleness unfamiliar to the pros watching. To their surprise the angry blonde ripped a piece of Izuku's shirt off, folded it until it was more compact, and placed it over the gaping wound on his side. He pushed down in attempts to stop what blood remained in his rival from joining what covered the ground. He didn't even care that his own hands and pants were becoming wet with said blood, the only thing that mattered was Izuku. Some heroes you guys are, he scoffed in annoyance while glancing at All Might. Can't even give proper first aid. What happened to the nerd anyway, All Might? And why do you look like that? The number one hero sighed, a look from Izawa, saying that an explanation could not wait. Glass after glass shattered against the wall, Shigaraki looking like he was about to murder Kurajiri where he stood on the other side of the bar. Why didn't you go back to him? Master could still be here if you'd just done your job. Tamura Shigaraki, please calm down. I was under the master's orders to bring you and the other members back here should things look rough. He also made it a point to inform me not to interfere in his fight with All Might. I am saddened by how the attack turned out as well, but we can only learn from it. Besides, the master did give you his quirk. It's your turn to take over until the time comes where we might be able to free him from capture. As it is now, he will be fine where he is. He will just have to wait until you've become strong enough to help him like he has helped us. It is your turn to lead now. The leaden blue-haired villain halted in his tantrum, his limbs stilling, as what Kurajiri said sank in. You're right, he spoke with what appeared to be newfound resolve. Master might be temporarily gone, but our attack was not a total failure. The morale of the school is sure to fall after the damage they did. That annoying Brad is apparently in the hospital if what your contact said is true, and word has already gotten out about the kid being the villain's son. We can only wait to hear what became of All Might. He's got to be out of the picture after that fight if the brat got that badly injured. The frenzied look entered Shigaraki's eyes once more, but this time there was a calm coldness behind the madness. I will pick up where the master left off. Kurajiri, tomorrow I want you to bring Jiren here. Tell him we're searching for more recruits. Also, ask him if he knows of any great quirks not being used to their potential, he finished with a dry lip smile. I could always use some more. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.